Is blued or blackened steel food safe and how is it done? You've probably seen blued steel before and it doesn't just look cool, it's there for a purpose. It protects steel from rusting and you can do it yourself at home and it's not that hard. There's a few different ways that you can do this, but I'm gonna talk about the main two ways because they're the most common and show you how to do it on these two little pieces of scrap steel. These are mild steel, and as far as I know, most of these processes only work on mild or high carbon steel, but not on stainless steel. Works on iron too, I think. The easiest way to do it is with this stuff. It's a cold blue solution. The second way is with this. This is just a mixture of hydrogen peroxide and salt, and it's used to make metal rust really fast. And the process to turn metal black with it is called hot bluing. It's more difficult, but people tend to think that it's more resilient than using cold bluing. But I also found sources that said that both ways are equally as resilient once they're treated with oil. So there's that. Now the whole reason I'm doing this video, and probably the reason that you're watching it, is you wanna find out if either of these two methods are safe to be used with food, like a kitchen knife that has blued metal on it. I found lots of differing opinions on whether either of these are safe to use with food. Nobody seemed to agree, so I decided to look at the actual science behind it myself and figure out what the answer was. And I'm gonna tell you that right now, but first a disclaimer. <clears throat> I am not a scientist, chemist, doctor, engineer, or metallurgist, and by no means an expert on this subject. But I am Jairus of all, master of none, and have the ability to understand aspects of each of these processes and be able to do some math, chemistry, and research to support my unprofessional opinion. Basically what I'm saying is I'm not responsible. You make your own decisions. So before I start the fascinating part of the video, I truly believe that both of these processes pose no health risk if used on steel that will be in contact with food. But that is just my opinion and it assumes normal use and it disregards any exceptional circumstances like being exposed to large amounts of selenium in your daily life. It obviously happens because people do get selenium poisoning, so there's that. So let's make this shiny metal black with a little bit of cold blue. We're gonna do this one first because it's way easier. This stuff is an acidic solution that deposits a layer of selenium dioxide onto the surface of the steel to protect it and turn it black. And it has selenius acid, nitric acid, phosphoric acid. It's corrosive to the eyes and may damage skin upon prolonged contact. In liquid form, this stuff is poison and it's corrosive. It's dangerous, wear gloves, be careful with it. But all you have to do to turn metal blue with it is put it on let it sit for a minute and rinse it back off again. It's pretty cool how fast this stuff works. Ready? How cool is that? After rubbing this a little bit, you get a pretty nice coat. And even though the liquid that I just used to turn this black is very dangerous, that coating is just selenium dioxide. It's a protective oxidation layer that should, in theory, keep the metal from rusting and it looks cool. And you can do multiple coats to get a better finish. See how that's starting to build up? And now that this is rinsed and dried, it's safe. And if you oil it, that makes it look really nice. That super thin layer of selenium dioxide and oil creates a very complete barrier over the surface of the steel. It doesn't let any oxidation happen to the steel underneath, but it's also very resilient. And people use this because it is an extremely thin layer. So if you have a very tight tolerance machined part and you put paint on it, it changes the tolerance. But this is crazy thin and doesn't change your tolerance, but it still gives it resilience and corrosion protection. But a lot of people believe that that coating is very hazardous to your health, but I don't think it is, and I'm gonna tell you why. Selenium dioxide is very dangerous it's toxic to humans in very small quantities. So then why do you think it's safe to be used with food? Pretty much anything, including water, is toxic to humans if you get too much of it. So now I just need to figure out how much of this coating you would have to ingest to potentially reach the minimum toxicity level for the average human. Stick with me on this. I'm about to do some math, but I keep it simple. So don't be afraid because I said the M word, M. I found some information on the internet that says that if you had a pure cubic centimeter of selenium dioxide, it would weigh 3.954 grams. I also found that the typical maximum thickness of cold blue is 2.5 micrometers. That's really thin. Now I found an article on PubMed, which is a peer reviewed medical thing website. I'll put a link to it in the description. In their research, they found that acutely toxic forms of selenium. 
which I don't know if selenium dioxide is acutely toxic or not, but the minimum level that they found for those compounds to show any signs of toxicity in humans was 400 micrograms per liter of blood. Now the article also said that that concentration does not indicate how much the person has absorbed or consumed because certain parts of the body store more selenium than the blood, like the kidneys. So to make this easy, if we say that the average human has five liters of blood, which is right in the middle of the average range, that gives us 2,000 micrograms that would have to be fully absorbed to reach the minimum toxicity level, assuming that our selenium compound on the steel that we blued is acutely toxic. Worst case scenario. So knowing this information, we can now easily figure out how many square centimeters you could safely consume of cold blue coating before you reached a minimum toxicity level. And it would have to be in a short period of time because your body does get rid of this stuff. One centimeter is the same as 10,000 micrometers. And our layer thickness is 2.5 micrometers. So that means we could fit 4,000 layers of cold blue coating into one cubic centimeter. So if you divide 3.954 grams, which is the weight of selenium dioxide in a cubic centimeter by 4,000, you get the weight of one layer of selenium dioxide, which is 988.5 micrograms per layer or per square centimeter of cold blue coating. So basically you would have to consume two square centimeters of coating to reach the minimum toxicity level in an absolute worst case scenario. Two square centimeters is not very much, but if the concentration in your body was consistent with how many liters of water your body contains, it would be more on the order of 18,000 micrograms for toxicity level in the blood to reach 400 micrograms per liter, which means you'd be able to consume 18 square centimeters instead of two. But it's not easy to remove it from steel. So cutting up a piece of chicken with your knife is probably not gonna remove very much of it. Now you can decide for yourself, but this is why I think cold blue coating is perfectly safe. Because not only would you have to remove two square centimeters of this coating, which is very resilient and hard to remove, but you would also have to ingest all of it and absorb all of it. And even then, you probably wouldn't have reached the minimum toxicity level, even for the most acutely toxic selenium compound. And that's only the concentration in the blood. That doesn't count the higher concentration that would develop in your kidneys, which is where your body passes it so that you don't get toxified from it. And also, people take selenium supplements intentionally. I've seen it in the stores. It's like 200 micrograms per pill. So there's that also. The second method for turning steel black at home is hot bluing, which is black oxide. To create black oxide, first you need iron oxide, which is rust, Fe2O3. And to make that rust really fast, you can mix some salt with hydrogen peroxide, and it will make your metal rust. You can see it but it would go faster if I had stronger peroxide. This is 3%, which is not very strong, but it works. And you can make this process occur even faster if you heat the metal up. The warmer it is, the faster it'll rust. This is a little more difficult and a little bit more time consuming than doing cold bluing, but you probably have salt and peroxide at your house. Yeah, salt and peroxide is not nearly as dangerous as all the chemicals that are in cold bluing liquid. Now I just need to wait until this gets a nice even layer of rust all over the entire surface. For the sake of this video, I'm gonna kinda take a shortcut. My rust isn't terribly even, probably because I didn't etch this with an acid like vinegar before I started rusting it. But I'm just gonna put it here, rinse it with water, and I'm gonna hit it with a torch. Instead of boiling it, which is what you're supposed to do, If you're not using a torch trying to take a shortcut to just make it turn black like I am, you don't have to worry about overheating the steel and ruining any temper or anything that's in it if it's hardened. So you do the peroxide and salt solution over and over again until you have a nice even layer of rust on it. And when you boil it, it turns it black and you're supposed to do it in distilled water so that you don't get other stuff in it. Anyway, this is the basic process. Fe203 turns into Fe304, it's time consuming. It's a lot more difficult than just wiping some fluid on and rinsing it off. Let me finish this and then we'll talk about whether this is safe or not. There, did it a few times, now it's black. Doesn't look as pretty as the cold blue, but I haven't oiled it yet. And this is black oxide, which is Fe304 that has been converted from Fe203, which is red oxide, to be a protective coating. But this is not protective until it's oiled. The bond to the surface with these two compounds is what allows it to protect the metal once it has been oiled. And you'll see a huge difference in the way it looks once oil's on it. This one, since I cheated and didn't do it the way that you're supposed to, took about 20 minutes. 
This probably would have taken an hour if I had done it correctly and boiled it in water. But it's scrap steel, so I don't care if it um, if I get it too hot or screw it up. I just wanted to show you how to put the black stuff on it. But the question is now, is this stuff safe or safer than this? This black oxide, you would have to take in a lot of this for it to have negative effects on you. WebMD says that 20 milligrams per kilogram of body weight is where you'll start to see toxic effects. And you remember that it was micrograms for the cold blue because it's selenium. This is just iron. Iron poisoning is kind of hard to do. There's no need to really even do any math on this because it's, it's obviously safe. And people have been eating and cooking on black oxide for a really long time because what do you think the blackness comes from? on a cast iron pan. I mean, maybe it's burned on oil, but I would assume that it's rusting to some extent, but anytime water's gonna hit it and it goes above a hundred and something, I don't know. I can't remember what the temperature is that this converts to black oxide from red oxide. If you can boil it in water and make it turn black, you can cook in a cast iron pan and you'll form black oxide. It's basically just an iron supplement. So now you know, you don't really need to stress out about blued steel being a health hazard. If you like this video, you should check out my others where I do much larger projects that are way more involved and not just simple like this little informative video. And you can subscribe to see the insane stuff that I'm doing in the very near future. And if you want previews, follow me on social media, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, Jairus of all, it's easy. Anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you learned something about blackening metal, bluing it, whatever. I'll see you next time. A little inform, I can't talk right now.